make the, we made the medial side yesterday. Today we're going to make the lateral side and we're going to put a heel cock on it. And the, one of the reasons that this dimension of stock is so nice to work with is because a heel cock is almost completely done before you even turn it up. Um, the golden means, which if you don't know about the golden means or the golden ratio, it's the mathematical concoction on which all mother nature survives and if you look the golden means calipers fit boom boom right on it so it's already the perfect square so don't get too overconfident whenever you're making heel cocks with this because basically nasa taught dyslexic chimps to make heel cocks back in the 60s with it so it'll be we should be able to do and hopefully we won't turn up too much we'll turn up uh I would say about a little inch and a quarter to inch and a half is usually what I turn up and then we'll forge it down and try and make it into a good proportionate. On this stock today, we'll be widening it more than we will be narrowing it. That's where most of our length comes from. Well, when you do deal with a dimension that's perfect, it doesn't grow as much when you widen it. It grows almost all of it when you narrow it and that's not what we want to do. That's where some of that extra length needs to come from whenever we're we're making this shoe. All right, I'm gonna be at the same, at a right angle to the horn. I'm gonna try and come right off the heel cock, off the horn and not hit the horn. And then I'm crimping it right there is to put a little bit of a swoop. Now I'm gonna straighten it up because when you're holding it like this, it might not be perfectly straight up and down. So what I do is I tilt, tilt it one way or the other. I want it to kink, but I don't want it to come forward. So you can see it's not falling around. It's not going under. It's just going straight down. There, I'm starting to get that corner. I'm gonna come here and I'm knife blading with the edge of my hammer. But I'm not hitting this little front edge right here. Then I pick up and doing the same thing. Now, when I flatten, you can see the branch. The branch is gonna be at the angle it's coming in from the widest part of the foot and I flatten. I have no cold shut. I have nothing. I don't want to pull it tight so much that I create a cold shut. So when I come in here, I'm just gonna flatten all that pucker in the back. And then I always want to pick this back corner. Some people drop their hammer down and they're hitting the whole thing. We want to establish the fact that I'm always raking that back corner towards me until I get this back corner built. All right, what I wanna do is I barely got enough room, but I wanna start from the edge of the, ha the anvil and half blows and then work my way all the way back up to the toe. And then what I'm doing is I'm hitting that back edge and I'm driving it down. Get the top of the mushroom and off. And then pick up here and do the same. Flatten that really nice in there. I have the, the thickness here, and I have the thickness that I left whenever I bumped. I'm hollowed out right in here. So I wanna flatten this until I get this, the width to that, and then I can narrow up. If I narrow up beforehand, 
it really, really can't be wide again. Once you narrow up a, a taper, you don't have enough material to get the width back. So I'm gonna create my width in my drawing before I go ahead and sweeten it up a little bit. All right, we're gonna come in here, just flatten and blend, flatten right in here and finish off. Now, by, by flattening this, kind of swoop this out. So I'm just gonna gather that back up a little bit. And now see how I'm hitting the back edge of the heel cock and setting it down. And come in here and I pick up a little bit and clean up that back. You can see I've almost got the whole thing filled in. And then we'll just finish off the heel cock. The heel cock, once we have that corner established, it really can't escape and go underneath. All right, we're gonna flatten right in here. And when I make this just a little bit wider, that way the front of my heel cock becomes wider. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Straighten this up with the line of travel. If you come up over here, you could see when I'm straightening it up with line of travel, I have this kicked out at the angle of the exact opposite of my commissure. You can see right here, all I'm gonna do is sweeten up the front edge. That makes it a little bit wider and I'm holding it at the angle that it needs to be held at. We're gonna bring it out on the horn. Remember to stay, stay a little bit further back. I'm just gonna get this started. Whenever you open it up on the horn, now I can come and run my branch down a little bit. Now you can see, I'm cleaning that corner up. I'm really trying to establish this corner right here. And that's the same thing on the underside. Really trying to establish that corner. Every time you hit, if I hit here, it's gonna expand because it always expands where you hit it. If I hit here, it's gonna expand. So you're looking to make sure that I have the right length of all four sides. So this corner is sticking out a little bit, so I'm gonna hit it back in. So, what fits nicest into the dimensions is we go here and then you hit the heel cock in the back. That looks most pleasing to the eye. All right, it's really hard to make a hammer blow just hit dead solid like in a power hammer. There's usually a little bit of torque on it one way or the other. So when you push in a heel cock down, it tends to fall one way or another, and that all has to do with your hammer handle. And so your hammer handle is no different than a sundial. Man, it just, it, wherever it goes, that's where it's gonna slump down. So the reason I picked this type 
this side of the, the roadster is because most people work ergonomically correct. They are like this, and when they drop it down, they're always caving it in to the inside corner. So you always want to be able to move your tongs and be able to hit that heel cock all different directions. You should be able to hit it like this to make it start to slump towards you if that's what you want. What you're going to see is when you look at them, they're not square up on top and they fall into one side or the other. You did that. You always do it. And that's when you start to, you, you just get comfortable and you hold things and you hit it down. Obviously, it's going to pull to the inside. The other side of the horse, obviously, with uh, the heel cock being on this side, every time you hit it, it works as lateral support, which is what you'd like to have in a heel cock. We've got probably a little over under, just a little under five and a half. And then we're just a little over five and a half, almost five and three quarter on the lateral side. I've kept my width here. I'm narrow. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fit pretty much with a little scant amount of material on the lateral side. If you go to any competition, anytime you fit the lateral quarter with a little bit of rim of foot and some boxing, you're always going to do good no matter what. That's that's where I've seen the 15 years that we've had the WCB, that's where people really win and lose something is if they don't fit that lateral quarter, it really goes bad. So you want that material so you can go out and around that that edge. Tomorrow we're going to bend both branches and we're going to get rid of these little safety nets right here. You know, the, the, if we're going to put a toe clip on this thing, that would be the time we're going to shape it up. We're going to commit to putting our two toenails in there. You can make a system to where you can make these shoot branch shoes one at a time. But for you, those of you that are just dipping your toe in the pond and want to make a roadster, you need to actually start measuring things out and get things to look right before you commit to those toenails. Because once you commit to those toenails, there's no going back.